somewhere deep within the vastness of space lies the theoretical nightmare known to man as the black hole. No man has ever seen it and none ever will, for the black hole is the blackest, most sinister prison ever devised by the processes of nature, the destination of eternal non-deliverance. So black is the black hole that it has acquired the supernatural quality of invisibility, its densely imploded stellar matter ensuring the impossibility of escape from the clutch of gravity, even light itself becoming a prisoner of the endless blackness. All things black in our world appear to have something in common. On an everyday level, black is always bad news. Blackmail, blackleg, blacklist, black market and so on. But what exactly is black? It is possible to dye materials a colour resembling black, but the dye itself appears to not actually be black at all, but more of a dark reddish brown. So how does black fit into the colour spectrum? It is called technically the electromagnetic spectrum, which is rather a lengthy word, but it simply means that you've got wavelengths which are very, very long for radio waves, very, very short for X-rays, and the eye is sensitive to one octave in the middle of this enormous range of wavelengths. And if there's radiation outside that, it's black to the eye. But of course the radio receiver might pick it up, or an X-ray machine might pick it up. So it's only black because our eye is only sensitive to this one small range of frequencies in the middle. A lot of people don't like wearing black and they are frightened by the colour black. Why, why do you think this could be? Because of death. Because of death. Death is always connected to black. Always wear black socks and uh, black underpants. Probably got some on today. <laughs> That's all. I believe that black should be worn at funerals. It's a sign of respect. No, I enjoy black anyway because, you know, it's a very sombre colour. Yeah? brings out the masochist in me. Why do you think um, bad men in films always wear black? Well, so that they're not seen in the dark. The popular movie characters Dracula and Zorro represent evil and good respectively, but the power of both is symbolised by black. Nature's darkest creatures have always evoked man's greatest fear like the deadly black mamba snake, black panther, and black widow spider. While the vulture and raven have both found their way into literature, as well understood symbols of the senior side of life. Oddly though, the black cat has always been a sign of good luck. Black is inherently mysterious and fearsome because in darkness we're confronted by the unknown. It would be interesting to observe the effect on our overcrowded hospitals if doctors and surgeons were to adopt a completely black uniform. It's not surprising then that black has always been used by man as an instrument of power, a psychological weapon used to create fear. The black shirt was used by Oswald Mosley, the Nazis and the Italian fascists. Hitler's SS adopted a black uniform. Did they really choose black by accident? Wherever we examine the state power structure, we find an abundance of black. At the state opening of Parliament each year, the highest court in the land is ushered into session by a mysterious sounding personage known as Black Rod. It's no wonder that the legal system courts the colour black, because it needs to be feared. From registrars and barristers down to clerks of court, the uniform is black. Even the police delivery vehicle has become known as the Black Mariah. The closer one gets to the higher echelons of power, the blacker things become. The more power you have, the more fear you need to create, and so the more black you use. The successful SAS raid on the Iranian embassy was a good example of the critical military advantage being gained by fearsome black figures. Even in government safety campaigns, black is used to frighten people into awareness. For nearly 40 years, black has been considered the most appropriate colour. There's 
danger on every road. You must stop, stop at the curb. Only cross where you can see the road is clear. Keep looking and listening while you cross. Always use the green cross code. Green is usually said, <clears throat> I think it's probably true, uh, to be rather sort of pacifying and pleasant. Red sort of wakes one up, and of course he is associated with blood and violence and so on. And how does black fare in that? In well, <laughs> black, I think the majority of people just find it extremely gloomy, don't they? Mm. Sometimes one has a dark room which is black, some of the rooms in my laboratory are black, and it is actually rather unpleasant, it's oppressive, I think. The Elizabethans, I think I'm right in saying, regarded black as ugly, fearsome, uh, because they didn't have street lighting, and it really was dangerous to go mm. around um, at night. They used to go to their parties when there was a full moon and so on, and avoid blackness. To them, there was nothing nice about black at all, because it was dangerous. Yeah. Um, so I would think a lot of it simply comes from the fact that, that the black environment is a dangerous environment. When you can fall over a step, somebody can hit you on the head, mm. one can run into something. Mm. I can remember the war, the blackout was very unpleasant, it was very difficult to get around, one disliked it very much. In most countries there is a well-established link between church and state. Archbishop Macarius was head of both in Cyprus. This arrangement works well for the state because religion has the power to control moral standards and reduce the worrying prospect of unchecked civil liberty. But does the church accept that it has this power over the congregation and is it perhaps influenced by the colour of the vestments? Oh yes, certainly, and I think anything like this uh, adds to that. But at the same time, they also want it. Uh, and I think, in some ways, they, they're they more happy with paying attention to the cloth than to the person who's wearing it. What better example of power could there be than man's ability to banish millions into the dark negative world of these women? Would they wear black if it had not been suggested, and in some cases demanded, by those in power? As with state law, religions impose penalties for those who are contemptuous of the rule book. Some of our more liberal churches of today were dealing out death penalties in previous centuries. Black is closely associated with the priesthood, and many holy orders have adopted a black habit. As a rule, the stricter the religion, the more abundantly you find black. What do churchgoers think of black in the church? The clergy used to wear uh, vestments or, or cassocks, uh, like this, for example, of lots of different colours. Um, they were allowed to wear uh, red or green or purple or whatever. But then these various colours came to indicate uh, various kinds of ecclesiastical rank, so that uh, only uh, priests of a particular rank could, say, wear purple or red. A bishop can wear purple, and a cardinal can wear red, and a pope white. Uh, whereas the rest of us uh, have to make do with black. So black, in this sense, is really an absence of colour, an absence of rank. I see. You say that the laity want to see you in black. Mm. Uh, what, dis what precisely do you think they want you to wear the black for? Is it that they respect black? Or, or is it that black somehow instills confidence in people? Well, I think they want to see us in uniform. And I think that they want the uniforms to be what they were before. They don't like change, or not too much change. Uh, and uh, black is a sort of colour that inspires confidence, I suppose, uh, because it's very sober, it's very respectable. Um, you expect the person to wear it to be rather predictable. And uh, so uh, they'd be happy with that. If we appeared in something, you know, in sky blue or something of that kind, um, that would be just too much of a surprise. Uh, if we'd always worn sky blue, I suppose they'd be annoyed about us wearing black. Black is strongly featured in Christian funerals, which seems oddly inappropriate in view of Christian teaching about our future after death. But again, the threat or thought of death is a powerful one. Community sprang to life as man began to exploit nature's black resources. Coal fueled the Industrial Revolution, and for well over a hundred years was the real power behind Western expansion. Oil, 
and our reliance on a more versatile fuel stimulated the world's political and economic nervous system and for a few created immense wealth and individual power. Henry Ford once said, you can have any color you like as long as it's black. The black car is in itself a symbol of authority. between the black which surrounds the seat of power and the dark area of witchcraft and black magic? Could it be a symbolic reverence to supernatural forces which are secretly pulling the real strings of power? And are the agents of those forces the men in black? During the last 30 odd years, numerous reports have appeared all over the world of UFO witnesses being visited and intimidated into silence by visitors dressed in black clothes. Like all fantastic stories, some people take them seriously, while the masses regard them as a joke. One theory is that they were thought to be government agents, acting for the security of the countries concerned, until reports started accumulating of their apparent ability to disappear at will. An ability associated with thousands of ghosts, UFOs and monsters that are reported from all over the world each year. Official reluctance for public UFO investigation is well known. Jimmy Carter saw a UFO some years ago, and during his election campaign he vowed to open official files on UFOs. But when he became president, he suddenly changed his mind. An earlier president, Thomas Jefferson, was responsible for introducing this emblem to the great seal of the United States. Contrary to the accepted recorded history, there is another fantastic story in which at least two historians have recorded that a tall man dressed completely in black suddenly confronted Jefferson as he strolled in his garden and handed over a piece of paper which he said was appropriate and meaningful. The paper is said to have contained the design of the eye in the pyramid. Perhaps the world's religions are not what they seem. Perhaps we are all pawns of a dark force that only becomes familiar to the few who climb to the summit of the power pyramid. There can be no easy answer to these questions as long as black remains an enigma to mankind.